Welcome back to the Honeycomb Hideout. I'm your host, your Simp Master Thirst King, Joe Kane. With me as always is our Scientist Supreme, Christine Kitchens. Great. I dragged myself out of my house. AK Love and Money. <laughs> AK Love Money. I'm, I'm working on the money bit. The money bit's a little tight right now. I'm, I'm loving no money right now. Uh, <laughs> all love and no money. All love and no money. That's, oh, that's oh, me. So it's love and a teensy money? <laughs> no, no, no. Like, we talking like no money. <laughs> like, homie had to give me 30 bucks to come see him tomorrow. It's like, draining in this <laughs> It's draining. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yes. And of course, we have the outlaw Blackie Jones. Oh, with a new money. Oh, what, what's that's the new my, moniker? Oh, oh, they're all still there. Marky Postal's there. Mm-hmm. All law Blackie Jones is there. You know, Dark Himalaya's there. But now, <laughs> uh oh, you Uh-oh. got Dark Black DU up for this one. Dark Black DU. Dark Black. What the dark, fuck? Wait, dark wait, wait, can, tell black me, tell me, where the hell does this shit come from? It's time to start getting on back on the mic. Oh shit! Time to start oh, rapping again. Oh so shit! I need another moniker. Oh, I said they've never heard Dark Black DU. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll, I'll roll with that for a minute on that mic. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Yo, give okay. us a rap about having no money right now. I'm broke as hell. <laughs> Don't know how high it was. I fell. I thought for a second it was just going to be those first two lines. I'm like, yeah. That's how I feel. God damn. <laughs> so broke, I can't even see my name in braille. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> I, I, I mean, that. I mean, shit, that was a spiritual. That one. <laughs> God damn. I can't see my knuckles. They ashy, but I know they ashy. I can't see them, but I know they ashy. <laughs> right. God damn. So, yeah. We in the hideout today, y'all. And um, we got some shit to talk about. The, um, not just, you know, not just uh, our traditional topic, because, you know, we got that. We, of course, have that. But. Motor City Comic Con was last week, and we definitely got to do our post-game report on that one. We'd like to do it now. We'll do it later. <laughs> I mean, imagine, imagine those workshops showed up and showed out, so we got to talk about it. So before we dive into the other thing, we got to make sure to get into this thing. Absolutely fucking put that. <laughs> so for those that don't know, Motor City Comic Con... Um, is well, it's a thing that happens every year, uh, twice a year nowadays. And sometimes actually. a good thing. Yeah, sometimes it is a good thing. It is quite very much so. Gives folks a chance to meet a lot of famous folk. Used to be about comic books. A whole lot of famous folk this year. A lot of fucking famous folk. Um, used to be about comic books, and you know, that was nice when that was the case. Mm-hmm. Not not quite the case so much anymore. Um, actually, it hasn't been for a while. Let's be fucking oh, honest. Oh, but this this time Ooh. took cookies and the cake. Yeah, so D, I can tell your see, power, your power like level spiking a little look, bit. So see, go, go, go ahead and get in. He, he said, "I'm gonna get that damn D on here to rent, so <laughs> I ain't got to rent." I love this shit. I was like, <laughs> I won't even there, and I'm so ready for this fucking tea. <laughs> see, now again, usually, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not containing anything this time. These motherfuckers here. Uh-huh. <laughs> they supposed it's supposed to be a comic con. You would mm-hmm. think that you would have some independent comic producers in there. Mm-hmm. You know, you out of 132 people in Artist Alley, you think you have some independent comic producers in there. Maybe 50%. Could we say mm-hmm. 50%? Mm-hmm. Why was it only like five people that produced independent comics out of 132 people? Oh, but oh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Hold up. I'm going to be generous. Oh, okay. Add the regular comic people in there too, right? Oh, you yeah. still only had like 10 people. Mm. Yeah, I think I saw Jeff was talking about that in our group chat. Was He was mm-hmm. saying there was, like, even in, quote-unquote, Artist Alley, which is supposed to be, like, indie mm-hmm. producers, that most people were doing prints of existing yeah. content. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have a I new mean, name for that punk-ass con. Uh-oh. Chotsky con. <laughs> Chotsky's every goddamn where. Now, the funny thing is, Monkey like, there feet, are, all sorts of shit. I mean, one would say, like, yo, know, Artist Alley, to give him a little bit of uh, grace— there are also crafters that uh, that uh, do artists out. But they used to separate them. They, they, they did used to separate them. They used, technically, crafters really fall under vendors as opposed to, you know, standard artists under Artist Alley. But, you know, they've been blending that a lot lately. That's their, their prerogative. But there were a lot of crafters. But even outside of that, 
literally less than 10 comics related if people. Rocky Everyone's selling. Fucked up. Everybody's selling prints and things. I felt like I was at an anime con. And that is not a good. Vibe. And we'll get to that. To be piece. an artist, hey, look, we'll get to that piece too, because there's where there's some 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 gripes with the anime cons too. Oh well, there's plenty to gripe about there. I mean, that's exclusively a consumer con. Let's be honest, anime cons. That's what they are. They're exclusively consumer cons. But you know, the thing is, this was my whole deal with anime cons comes out mm. like this. Oh, and I'm gonna get back to those uh-huh. other motherfuckers. Oh yeah. <laughs> the thing with anime cons is this, anime. The root of anime, for the most part, is manga, right? Oh, yeah. They treat these manga guys like they bastard step kids. They look mm-hmm. at them like, and again, it's, 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 it's the fan base when it comes to anime con to get on mm-hmm. my nerves. Oh, yeah. You know, you be a manga creator, they're like, what is that? We're popular popularity in the anime story, but not be anything at that fuck on that. Honestly, I want to see an American doujin con. That's what I want to fucking see. I, that's the shit I want to see. Look, and the thing is, in, in any chance, that's yes, right. I'm all over the cosplayers today. I said it. <laughs> They're like, well, I'm just another chance for me to cosplay. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I yeah. think it is. I ain't got no problem with cosplaying. You know, I respect do. I've seen some amazing cosplayers. But at the end of the day, if that's the only reason you going, make your own goddamn cunt. That's right. <laughs> I said it. Oh uh, shit! So wow, sorry. that's a very contentious statement. So should I should I make sure Brianna listens to this episode? Hey, Brianna, know how I feel. <laughs> I love Brianna, but again, Brianna got stuff out, so oh, yeah, you know true, I can't true. really put her in that category. But oh, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it's like I know. Look, cosplaying is, is shows nothing but fan love and support. I'm with it all day. But when you go there, oh man, I, I, I saw something. <laughs> man, I can't remember where it was. Uh-uh. They asked this woman she's cosplaying to somebody. They asked her, you know, would you follow the character? Oh, yeah, I follow the character. Tell me something about the character. Mm. Oh, fuck that. Crickets, yeah. and I mean crickets. You understand? Well, well the thing is... Straight well, Louisiana swamp cricket. Well, for one... Well, that there's there's two ways to look at that. There's A, it's kind of gatekeeping-ish for, to make sure that... to for Dude, someone oh, to, I get that to yeah. a certain extent, but okay. one little factoid, one little morsel, that all I ask for, and it's, I get... Louisiana, Louisiana, swamp. Cricket. Wait a minute. Did they at least know the name they, of the character? No. They knew the name. That's it. Hmm. And they said, you know what? I'm uh, gonna, uh, the, the character didn't have the midriff that they had in their uh, cosplay. But, <laughs> you so, know, so they creativity kind of, is creativity. So they, so they kind of party city the, the character's design effectively? No doubt. No doubt. Okay. But it's cool. I mean, I'm all for the creativity. I mean, some, some people do just like but, the way uh, a character my looks. Thing is, and uh, my thing is, is too about them. gatekeeping at the end of the day, right? Oh, yeah. I contribute something, shit. That's what I say. <laughs> contribute a little knowledge. I don't think that's asking too much, is it? I not that, not technically, not technically. But it, it but I, it does bring up an interesting side of things that honestly, as far as like cosplay, as far as I've always understood it, is meant to be a celebration. It's, it's great. meant to be I'm a celebration of, a lot of, of your, your your fandoms, your medias, and things like that. But I'm not sure when it when it actually happened, but there did come a point where it kind of crossed into basically just another layer of modeling and to one another extent layer or another. Of, 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 pop, of, of what I call uh, popularity whoring. I'm, Wait, I'm, what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Popularity whoring is what I call it. Uh-oh. Provide the context. This is the thing. <laughs> okay? What kills me at the end of the day is that mm. sometimes you get people who, because other people are doing it, ah, uh, yeah, they'll be like, "Oh, they seem like they're getting popular from that. I'm gonna do it too." I've seen people like this, believe well, it or those not. Those chin tra- trend trace, uh, right? Trend, trend chasers. chasers. There we go. Exactly. Yep. That's a better term. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Okay, but here, here's the problem with taking that perspective: Uh-oh. is uh, in a kind of weird sort of way, you can mm. say the same thing about mm. us, right? Like the oh. idea of uh, mm. there are people getting popular off of podcasts. We should do a podcast. And I recognize that the Honeycomb Hideout has been around for a while. But as far as the idea of like, ah, shit, everybody's got a podcast or ah, shit, everybody's got a YouTube channel. I think that same kind of vein goes through all across that kind of I see where you're going with that. Mm -hmm. So let me try to clarify even more. Okay. (laughs) This is what kills me. You know, 
in, in terms of even like capitalism in and of itself, right? Mm. You will have people who, at the end of the day, at the beginning of a thing, they didn't give two shits. Mm. In the middle of the thing, they didn't give two shits. But when they looked and they saw a particular part of that thing that they were like, wow, you know, I'm feeling a little low about myself. I'm, you know, and again, mental health, mm-hmm. it is, you know, it's just real. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to, and it happens in comics too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? You'll get some guy be like, man, you know what? People making money drawing b- bad girls and breasts all over the ta- all over the place. I'm going <laughs> to do that. Really, dude? Is that all you're in comics for? Well, man, they making money like that, though, ain't they? That's like, hey, bro. Yeah, respect that's... the craft, cuz respect the craft. I know, but at the same time, hustlers gotta hustle. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> but you know what that makes you, Mark? I ain't that saying makes nothing. You a hipster. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what? If the shoe fits, I'm gonna put both of them on. That's okay, right. now I'm just picturing Mark, Mark in one of those curly, shoes, yeah. one of those curly mustaches. Now I'm, I'm saying like, like, oh, and from a hip, oh, look, Joe will tell you, you ain't you, look. If you want to hear that. He start talk about hip hop. He'll tell oh, you. Oh well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, he's absolutely day, a hip uh, hip hop hipster. I'm absolutely. like at the end of the day, it's like, look, I'm not saying people can't participate. Go ahead, participate, right? Mm-hmm. But respect the craft. That's all I'm asking. Oh, yeah, that's legit. Oh, yeah. Respect the craft. I feel you. I feel you. But they okay. don't have no respect for the craft. None. Just another way to, uh, or better yet, like uh-huh. I, like I give you an example, uh-huh. right? Back in uh the '80s, late '80s, right? So mm-hmm. hip hop. Had moved, had become a little more Afrocentric, and it moved away from all those big gold chains and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you seen these people wearing these African medallions, mm-hmm. bunch of these guys. Man, why you wearing that? Well, man, that's dope, man. I mean, what that medallion mean? I oh, don't know, man. It looks sweet, man. The girls like it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it is mm-hmm. what it is. Believe really. that's where they at. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then they want to come talk to you like they, you know, like they uh, John Henry Clark or somebody. They're like, no, nah, son. You 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 you're not John Henry Clark son. You're not mm-hmm. Dr. Ben son. True. You know what I'm saying? You you know you might be a little Farrakhan, but that's that's debatable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. Okay, so this is how we're gonna get, end up getting wildly off topic and oh, not even make shit. it to what we were supposed to. Talk oh, it's still there. The anchor's there. <laughs> but I, I I gotta ask. Um, have y'all been following this drama going on between uh fucking um. <laughs> Drake and uh, is it like because <laughs> we're there? So like now I'm like, let's. If, that's baby shit. That's Alex, baby shit. Alex baby and Colin shit. have been. It's Alex, basically like this. Oh, actually, my, cu- two my buttery, cousins, two buttery soft motherfuckers <laughs> fighting with butter. My cousins have been. Um, my cousins, uh, Damon. Only too, thing you gonna do is get slippery to watching that because all the butter going around. Yeah. Uh, our boy FD Signifier has been following it, though. FD yeah. needs to follow something else. Waste oh, no. your, don't waste your time, FD. It, 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 it was on his side channel, not That's on the all right. Channel. I'm going to tell you what. He's going to slip in some of that butter and be mad. <laughs> but Buttery. Yeah, no, that is, you um, understand? Playtex. That is just. Fisher uh, Price. <laughs> I mean. They, Hasbro. <laughs> uh, like, well, it's funny. But is it parquet? Beyond parquet. <laughs> They beating each other up with loofahs. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Because it's like I know there were like diss tracks involved uh, yeah. and shit, and I, my understanding is that's typically semi-serious. But Christine, I could write rhymes for you, and you'd be out there dogging them and do that. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's a, they'd be it's, like, stop, Christine, you're hurting me. It's one of those scenarios where <laughs> it's. <laughs> okay. And it's unf- and all you gotta do is wear a hoodie. That's it. It's basically uh, I, I hell I I can't even really say where it started because I was following it for a little bit only because FD was um uh you know talking about it every FD now and again. He has again. nothing better to do on that side channel. I think so, but it but it's also one of but he talks a lot about hip hop and it's technically a big thing in hip hop right now. Oh, so. is it? Technically. I must have been asleep on that one. <laughs> anyway, um no the the thing of it is like you know, Kendrick Lamar, uh Drake and J. Cole, if I remember correctly, those were the three parties involved. All right. Okay. <laughs> Look at but, the point. Um, it's like we'll I mean, not even deign <laughs> to give this discussion any more attention. I mean if, effectively <laughs> what you've got are three technically of the biggest modern hip hop 
artists involved in it. And yeah, that technically does count as a big deal. But in the ultimate grand scheme of things, though, it's just a bunch of rich assholes talking shit about each other. Worse than that, it's a goddamn pillow fight. <laughs> Butter. Pillow fight. <laughs> like... They smacking each other with baby oil. <laughs> oh, yeah, and baby powder. <laughs> Don't smack so, too hard because, you know, it's, it's a carcinogen. Talcum. That's so what like... I hear these days. A science fact. So, <laughs> and that was our science minute. Um, but but yeah, it's ultimately just a bunch just a bunch of assholes griping over who's the big who's got the big dick right now. I, uh, uh, quite uh, frankly, it's not any of them. <laughs> I got an insight. Uh huh. Well, you know, so uh-huh. Kane's I, laughing at them. Rakim's laughing at them. Yeah. Oh yeah. So big, this is the, big Daddy Kane had a lot to say though. Big that was Daddy funny, Kane. So. But, um, so this is <laughs> so this has been an interesting start to this conversation. Oh yeah, because uh, we're we're getting a lot of flack from uh, hipster Dudley over here, <laughs> Blackie Jones, <laughs> Blackie hipster Blackie Jones. <laughs> but um, talking around these ideas of you know coming in late to the game, mm. right? Like you know talking about being frustrated with cosplayers because of you know feeling like. There's not the respect for the craft and coming around and, you know, mm. pillow fight rap artists, that kind of thing. And, you know. Off the magic dragon. Off the magic dragon. <laughs> and, you know, talking about the current state of things, I think we can actually use this as a little bit of a segue to the mm. other topic we were going to okay. bring in today. Because <laughs> with this longing <laughs> for days of yore and, you know. The way that things used to be. I don't even want days of yours. I just want honesty. That's all. Can honesty. I get some? Honesty. Honesty. But um, <laughs> something that I wanted to talk about today is mm. the idea of unfinished business in media. Mm. And, you know, when we're talking about the things where we're frustrated about how they are now, mm. and we turn and we start to think about, you know, remember when this was on TV? Mm. Remember when oh, this yeah. was rolling out? And, you know, so, and sometimes things like that... Mm come to a clear finish Mm. but sometimes they don't and then you see shit rolling out these days and you're just kind of like damn i wish they would finish this thing or i wish they would finish that thing and um i wanted to talk about Mm. that today Mm -hmm. is how do you handle it when you have some sort of beloved piece of media whether it's a comic book series or a television series or anything like that where it just stops in the mm. middle and nobody ever picks it up. I go into the closet, get in the fetal position, cry a lot, <laughs> and then get to after my tears are, have, have saturated whatever I'm wearing, I come out and I act like I never did any of it. <laughs> That's how I do it. That's how I deal with it. Okay? The, 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 emo- the emotional fortitude of the 70s. Oh, wait, but did not rationalize it. <laughs> I did some rationalization. Oh, shit. So, a man who did high school of the dead, he died. He couldn't help it. Yep, yep. <laughs> he did, did, could not help that shit. Like, and Nick's clowning me all the time. Oh, Where yeah. my season two at, man? Where <laughs> season two? I'm like, well, it's like that. Okay, bro. All right, fine. <laughs> Farscape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe will tell oh, you I'm yeah. the monstrous Farscape fan. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, man, why you turn uh, them to dust at the end, man? How, how come they ain't back, man? Well, what's up? Mm-hmm. Rockney S. O'Bannon. You wouldn't made that fucking defiance, but you could have spent that time making Farscape. <laughs> well, I had to get that out of my chest. You know what I mean? So I had to, you know, I gave myself the time to mourn. And then I, you know, I, I moved on a little bit. It's still there, though. A little <laughs> bit. Still a little, little bop, you know? Oh, yeah. The end of the day. And I, I, I feel, you know, a little hurt, you know? But, you know, <laughs> I, I can deal with it. I'm a grown man. I can handle it. Well, I think. <laughs> Yeah, for me, um, I I can actually say that there's probably a limited number of scenarios where I've consumed something and was, you know, super into it and mm. loving it, and then it just never finished. Um, well, that's not true, because as we all know, I am an avid reader of fan fiction, yep. and that shit is law and life that you have to accept that 99% of the shit you're reading is not going to get finished. Yep. But um, in terms of like... The stream of consciousness only takes you so far. 
That's true. It's true. <laughs> Except for that one chick who did like 200 chapters of a Harry Potter fan fiction. Holy fuck. Um, she but, had a lot of shit she was working through. And they had no job. He's sitting up there. Whatever. Who oh, knows? yeah. No. Like, she, these were some long ass chapters. She had to be doing lines of coke or something because she was burning <laughs> these out quick. But um, Those are Ozempic chapters. All of them. That ain't even how Ozempic fucking works. Now, you, <laughs> no, you need to stop. <laughs> It but, does know, in my world. But, you know, that's, you ain't shit. that's a little bit different, right? Because that is something somebody's doing unpaid in their free time. Oh, and, yeah, um, yeah. With no hope of ever monetizing that. But, what? Are you sure? Well, I know that. I'm sorry. That's not true. You're correct. Um, looking at you, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. But, yeah. um, and we could write a script just on her doing that and monetize it. <laughs> no, maybe that should be another episode. That actually... Fan fiction in real life. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. All right, tabling it, yes, tabling yes, it. Yes. Um, but <laughs> Call it that damn girl. <laughs> but there's kind of this expectation um, mm. for, like, print media, especially mm. when it's coming through, you know, bigger houses like mm. Image and stuff like that. There's almost this expectation that, you know, surely it'll make it to its end. And mm. I remember when I started going to grad school, like, a million years ago, it feels like now, um, <laughs> I started, was when they started releasing comics for uh, the series called Bitch Planet. Uh, and yes. I loved that shit. That was, like, some sci-fi meets Orange is the New Black shit, and mm. I loved it. And it was going so good. Mm. And I was regularly checking in for new issues, and then it just fucking stopped. Mm. Like, mid-plot point and everything, it was a super popular comment, and then it just, mm. it wasn't. And I searched the corners of the web <laughs> to understand why what had happened had happened. It's like somebody getting killed in a tragic car so accident tell me or something, what you and found. you're looking for answers. I found very little, actually. <laughs> well, like, I'm going to give you the rest. Oh, shit. You know, I want to know what you find. <laughs> I don't, well, that's the thing is, that's why it was kind of bizarre yeah. is, you know, I went and I checked, like, the social channels for image for mm. the specific creator of Bitch mm. Planet, and it was just radio silence. There mm. were people who were on there who were um, fans like myself mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, like, what what happened with this? Where where did it go?" Bitch and- Planet was what? Can't remember. Was it night? Was it two thousand sixteen? Two thousand? It's that it's sounds about the, right. It's in, in the there, yeah. early to mid teens okay. of the twenties. So, yeah. yeah, this is what usually happens comic wise, right? When you deal with that type of stuff. Mm. Let's talk about the bad first, and then talk about the. <laughs> the bad is that the creators can't come to they 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 hit an impasse, mm. and from a professional impasse, right? So this guy may be one of the guys may not see the vision that the other guy does. Mm. If, if it's particularly usually the writer has a vision and the artist doesn't see the vision and whatnot, mm. and so boom, they decide to go their separate ways. One, mm. uh. It's sometimes it's an ownership issue mm-hmm. where the artist will feel like, you know, well, you know, well, I should own a piece of this. And the writer is greedy, mm-hmm. you know, because he's trying to uh, 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 save all the movie rights or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And that breaks up good partnerships. Yeah. You know, that happened with Robert Kirkman on The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Money, money, up, money, nothing break up your partnership quicker than a dime. Mm-hmm. Uh and a lot of times, sometimes people just have personal shit happening. One or two of them could have personal shit happening mm-hmm. that, you know, they're not privy to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a whole bunch of stuff, that, you know, or maybe depression. Maybe actually the fact that they got so big so fast that they personally like doing their little commerce together but couldn't deal with the other things that surrounded that thing, you know. So the usually in comics, success. Right. Usually in comics, those are some of the main things that usually stop a series and you never hear it. You know, for the most part, mm. you know, it's always tragic. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. Know, but I mean, hopefully, you know, but it's just funny, though, because like uh, sometimes I listen to Perch. Yes, I do. <laughs> sometimes I want to take Perch and kick him down the flight of stairs, <laughs> you know, but he's getting better. I give him that. Mm. Unlike those other people from that, you know, what uh, TV fish TV guy right? <laughs> I kick him down the stairs all the time. But so he was talking about Perch. Uh, comics by Perch, you know, I, I like him for the most part, but so mm. he's always talking kind of about this subject, right? And the thing is, with people, comics, too, comics labor intensively. Mm-hmm. You know, people will be like, oh, it's great, blah, 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 man, look, me and Joe doing, when we do comics, you know, he spends a great amount of time writing it, I spend a great amount of time drawing it, 
And then mm. somebody will just read through, look through it like, oh, that was great. Da, 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 da. Peace out. Mm. You know. And don't, don't give us no feedback, no nothing. Yeah, they buy it. That's cool. But we want some feedback. How mm-hmm. are we doing? Whatever, you know, are we, uh, how do you like the story, right? So We, we need our passion fed. Right, right, because right. Because it is a, it's right. a labor of passion. So, I mean, again, I mean, that's labor intensive and people, you know, they, they get in their own mental health situations and all that. So it's, you know, do we, you can take that, that whole pie and kind of, you know, figure out something from it. Mm. There's got to be something from that in, in, in that vein. So. Mm-hmm. I oh, hope yeah. it wasn't grief. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's interesting to talk about that, the success burnout of when you actually do mm-hmm. well and you can't keep up. And, oh, yeah. You know, I, I went to comics because I will forever be fucking salty about bitching about <laughs> Shit, I love that shit so much. Um, <laughs> Write him and explain your saltiness. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's because it's of the lady who uh, wrote that particular Write her and explain <laughs> her saltiness. <laughs> but, the um, the <laughs> but, you know... And that wait, it was a lady who did that. It was uh, not Kelly Sue, was it? It was uh, was it Kelly Sue the comic did that? Up to to Google. Uh, let's see, Bitch Planet. She be going through some shit. Oh, it was her. She be going through some shit. Yeah, I can I can believe it. These assholes. These some of these. uh, Oh shit! It was Kelly Sue the comic. Some of these assholes be giving her the. The fluff. Kelly Sue and artist Valentine Delandro. Uh, let's see. I here. give her. I give her grace. Oh yeah, no Kelly. A Kelly lot of Sue. Grace. Yeah. She be going through. Some she shit. she has to deal with a lot of shit in the comics industry. Why? Because she talks, and she's like, you know, women ain't supposed to talk. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, hell, fuck oh, that. Hell, her husband. So many levels. Her husband's like, Matt Fraction, but he goes through some, through shit with comics too. Like he basically. Dropped out of the big two because of all the bullshit he had to deal with. You know, also funny though. Again, being an artist though, that's the whole thing about any, any type of artist. You gotta have a thick skin, buddy. Mm-hmm. If you don't, these people boy will eat you alive. You know, oh, yeah. I, you know, I've dealt with people, you know, uh, just doing illustration and stuff for role playing mm-hmm. games. Man, I've dealt with mm-hmm. people. Well, I don't like what you doing. Don't buy my shit, then, bitch. Mm-hmm. You know, but they don't expect that. <laughs> They'll be like, well, I'm going to tell Kevin to fire you. Well, you don't get get it done quicker than the sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, it's like, get the fuck on out of here. But, but yeah, going off of what you were saying, I, honestly, there's usually one of those four reasons is what usually contributes to it. And fans thinking that yeah. they own the property. That's another oh, thing yeah. that make you mad. Well, that's true. Fans have <laughs> fans have driven driven many a creator away from I had a their guy own tell creation. Me one time he's like, oh, we own Star Wars. The fan owns Star Wars. I said, I wasn't. What, when did Disney give me? I don't. I, don't get no <laughs> I was giving like, it. I don't yeah. remember seeing your name on the copyright. I didn't get no yeah. giving check. Where did I get a check at? <laughs> but why are you getting a check and I'm not getting a check? <laughs> he ain't getting no check, bro. He ain't getting no check. <laughs> but well, like we yeah. can agree though that when that happens, it. It is trash because it is. It's it's yeah, it's trash. Trash. Yeah. You got it. I'm moving. Hey, look, Farscape. That's all I gotta say. Farscape. Uh, uh, and like even fucking Firefly, which uh, people oh, yeah. were telling me about Firefly, and I almost uh, did not want to watch that shit because they're like, it's so well, good, but they never finished it. Well, it gave well, me a good movie though. Well, here's here's the thing. It gave me a good ass movie. It's the rare. It's Firefly was one of those rare instances where, though the the, the whole season didn't air, it actually managed to wrap up its season. It aired, well. of, it aired out of uh, order too. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, that there was a lot of bullshit going on with Firefly. They like Fox was almost actively trying to Yo, make I'll, this I'll, shit I'll, fail. I'm trying not to sing the really? song, Joe. I'm trying not to sing the song. Take really? My hand. Oh, take my hand. <laughs> take me where I cannot stand. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, like I mean, fuck Joss Whedon, but goddamn, that show is fantastic. <laughs> Maybe that's why Joss Whedon's mad because no one was fucking Joss Whedon. Actually, I can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, like Firefly had a lot of shit stacked against it. They kept changing its air date. They kept airing the shit out of order, and not to and and, and basically on and on top of all of that, nobody it couldn't get any viewer retention going on because of that. The mouse owns it now. They, yeah, it does. <laughs> the mouse owns Firefly. What? Everything because I'm fired Fire- from Fox. The mouse owns. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess that's what's for the mouse owns everything. Yeah. But uh, but oh, I will oh, say take my heart, take my hand. But, oh. <laughs> but I do actually, I actually own it on Blu-ray. So if you ever do want to watch it, it is actually very much a worthwhile watch. And the season doesn't necessarily 
rap, quote unquote. And then but it gave it me Serenity. Decent. I love him. Give me it, Serenity. It ends decent enough, and then Serenity serves as a really solid bookend to the to the character story. Have you seen Serenity? Believe it or not, I actually have seen Serenity. Oh, I loved it. Although you know what's funny mm. is the only reason I saw it is because when I was a little teeny bopper in middle Uh-oh. school, uh, I was really big on the AMV game, and ah, there was shit. an AMV yep. where they had they were doing scenes from Serenity, and mm-hmm. it was to uh, the Within Temptation song Jillian, uh-huh. and I was like, you know what, maybe I'll go watch this movie. Okay. <laughs> I watch it because everyone, I, I'm I am a I am a huge huge Summer Glau fan. I, oh, yeah. I the most people don't know this. I watch anything with Summer Glau in it, the five things she's ever done. Oh, even yeah. those, even some of those weird movies and she's playing somebody's wife on uh, Navy SEALs yeah, yeah. or whatever. I know these things. Yeah, I trust <laughs> that. I trust that. Okay, uh, uh, Joe, like, so we, we're over here talking about the shit that we got some major fan blue balls on. Like, do you, did you Fan ever... blue ball. That's real, man. That's <laughs> really the only way I can describe it. Did you... Yeah. Do you have shows like that or uh, comics or whatever oh, where it just man. stopped all of a sudden? I would I and would actually <laughs> I would honestly think the only one that really comes to mind is oh, Come clean, motherfucker. No. It, it would be next wave, probably. It would probably have to be next no, wave. No, I'm just telling you, I was there for that <laughs> one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Man. On the way, come up, man. Coming out, it's cool, man. It's cool, man. No, maybe don't do me like that, man. I was very upset. I mean, it, it, they wrapped it up, but you can tell this is just like, well, shit, we got two issues. Let's figure out how to do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, like next wave is one of those books that, quite frankly, our buddy Eric talks about it even more than I do. But I honestly, it was it was the series that taught that actually really highlighted the fact that yeah no superhero comedy is kind of fucking awesome and i want to do it was funny it's what geared me in that direction it was funny um i would say like that um let me see what else there was uh nothing else is coming to mind right now because i think i've made my peace with a lot of the films and tv shows aspects of things okay Um, so (laughs) that's interesting because uh, like, I think we've all agreed that it's kind of terrible when this oh, happens. Oh, no, absolutely. But in a weird way, in a not-so-weird way, maybe, mm. it's almost becoming more and more normal. Because mm. when we look at streaming channels like Netflix and stuff, they mm-hmm. will pick up a show. They'll do a season. Oh, and they the, just oh. And, they, and they'll just be like, nope, we're done now. And mm-hmm. I've had that happen to me a million times on Blood Netflix. Blood and bones. Yep, Yeah, yep. where you'll start a series and be like, oh, my God, this is so kick-ass. Mm-hmm. And then Netflix is like, no, we're not going any farther. Yeah. And, like... I have seen people online say that I won't even watch the show until I go online, see if they've been confirmed mm-hmm. for season two. If not, I'm not fucking Or you with wait it. till like season three to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so <laughs> it's like, like three seasons. <laughs> and so it's like the fact that, you know, and I might say that this <laughs> is a phenomenon that's almost unique to Netflix as opposed mm. to other streaming services because Oh, Apple uh, TV will do it to you. Apple TV is Who will do it to you do now? I I did think of one. And it's actually re- recent. Jupiter's, um, uh, uh, fuck, what was it? Back called? of that shit was whack. <laughs> I actually liked that Man, damn show. Man, that shit was whack. It was fat. It was a that fascinating was, as hell. Look, show. dude, I read the comic right multiple times. I got have all of, and I think the comic ended like that too. Didn't finish. No, no, the comic definitely it made it a lot oh, farther. God, bro. Yeah. I, hey, I think I, that, I that's a Mark. That's a of. that's a Mark Miller comic. You yeah, know that Millard, shit. Millard, man, you know, some back in the day, sometimes you know he fall off the horse too. I'm, I'm, a, the, I'm a fan, yeah. but still. Hey, I, 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 Mark Millar to me, he can take him or he can leave him. But, but the show look at like was this, solid. Though. But looking like this though, this is why. Mm. What was, what else was out during that time? Uh, let's see. Kick ass was well the done by that point. Was out during yeah. That time. Oh, so it basically yeah. looked like a boys clone and not good compared to the boys. That's why that motherfucker had to go. Which is really interesting in that in that standpoint, but. It was really more of a kingdom come um, knockoff, oh, no, really, is what it was. Light, it, was it was boys like. It was boys like, but really, it was taking its tones more from kingdom come, though. Don't get me wrong, again, oh, it felt like Watchmen, too. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of Watchmen there. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. But just, but like I said, I, I just really said. enjoyed it, but the fucking season ended on a cliffhanger, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, it's not. Like, I really was. I liked what they were doing but with it. But you kind of got. Another peek into that world. 
Super mm. Crip. Oh, shit, Super that's Crip right. is in that world. I did need I need to finish that. One. What you never saw the anime Super Crip? Uh, that's uh, I, know, I know I like four got four episodes in. I, I need to finish it. It was awesome. It Again, was cool. You ever read the comic? Uh no, I did not the read the comic. It was genius. <laughs> genius. Uh, for... Chef Kiss. <laughs> I mean, the, the title uh, tells itself, but it's basically literally super criminals going, if I remember correctly, and going to another country where that didn't have as many superheroes. Well, no, to... what it was is that this guy okay. got some trouble. Okay, yeah. Money troubles. Old, yeah. old supervillain had to do one last score. Oh, yep, 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 yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it was it, it ended up being like some old Kaiser Soze shit, too. It was good. Ah, uh, shit, real. okay. Okay, so I definitely got to finish that one. But, yeah. Oh, no, dude, I, speaking of a, that, there's a have, you guys read, have you guys read Big Game yet? I haven't. I have not well, gotten to any of it. Oh my god! Yet. <laughs> it is one of the best comics I've read in thirty years. You're filleting Mark Miller a little hard I, right I, now. I, <laughs> hey, bro, let me tell you something, dude. I kiss his asshole right now. <laughs> this motherfucker bad. I mean, I'll be honest. Pepe, they got Pepe Larraz on one of those titles. Oh, so Pepe, I'm, look. I, I, just I, don't I, know. I, I I would buy it for Pepe alone. Look, bro, he had he had one of my favorite modern artists. He had Ali on one on one of the titles, kicking kicking ass. I taking did. Ass. T- I saw that. Speaking of which, I have something for you. Oh shit! There's this uh, Lake Como, whatever. This big hoity toity Comic Con in somewhere in, in, in Italy, I think. Oh uh, yeah, that's Italy. Yeah. And so they're doing all these interviews with all these great guys that we love. And oh yeah. The, the first extensive interview I've ever seen with Ali Cordy. He did a fucking interview. That's right, my friend. Go and look on our uh, oh, go shit. go and look on our uh, comic book uh, manga workshop uh, okay. uh, playlist, and it's in there. Ah uh, shit. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Ali. The, Oliver Corp. I was just thinking uh, about the smile yeah. on your face as I was listening to it last night. <laughs> <laughs> if that man ever releases an art book, I will buy five. He has one. He's talking about how he draws some nudity in there, and they got mad at him. God damn it. Yes, he does. He does a lot of. He's he's gay, so he does a lot of male nudity, and yeah, he's people are in. not people are not a fan of it. And his dreads look vicious. Like he got the same cut you got. Nice. Excellent. He doesn't post very much, <laughs> but but yeah, no, like no, no shit. Now I'm plating. God damn it. <laughs> 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 okay, I have a question. I have a question. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, like I said, I saw on the internet that mm-hmm. with the direction a lot of these streaming services are starting to go where they're kind of like, if we do not hit like Stranger Things numbers mm-hmm. right out of the gate, mm-hmm. we're not interested. If you, Just about, yeah. <laughs> if you heard that there was a kick-ass series, you know, either a TV series or comic mm-hmm. book series or whatever, mm-hmm. but you were told that it's not finished and the creator hasn't made new content for like six years, are you going to go and read it? Oh, you mean like Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, honestly, it really, it, it, it really depends that on makes the you more lazy than money. Uh, but, but, yeah. True. It, it really depends Do on the respect str- the craft. <laughs> it depends on the strength of the premise for me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I like, I will actually dive into a thing as I'm long greasy. as <laughs> it really, it really just depends on the strength of it. If I, if someone can tell me about this thing and I'd be like, Oh damn, that sounds dope as hell. I'll still go ahead with it. Even though the road is not finished, I'll still drive it. We need I, more I'm, Miyazaki's. Yeah. Miyazaki, like, I know yeah. I got money, but I got one more left. <laughs> hey, no. guess what? I got another one left. <laughs> it's Miyazaki to a T. You know what? God damn it, I got one more oh, left. I love that man so much. He's so good. Then he says, you know. He's going to die in the middle of one of these. You I know that, right? No, he won't. he'll finish it. Then he'll die. <laughs> then he'll be like this. He's going to Norman Rockwell. I'm and then, sorry. Hey, he'll, go, he'll do like, like Palpatine, make some robot, and he'll come back. <laughs> I got one more. AI hey, ain't shit. <laughs> oh god. Oh, and, and anime yeah. has lost its fucking way. That's what he said this last night. Uh, he's he said that a few times. Oh, not just like he said it this time, no. Yeah, he's shit. going all in. So, so yeah. like I guess my other hmm. thing is like what does this mean? Hmm. Um what are the implications for hmm. creators such as ourselves? Because hmm. you know, th- since you can't rely on long form story to be a thing anymore. And it's hmm. so hard because there's so many stories that feel like they're best told in mm. two or three seasons. And mm-hmm. it's almost, it's, it, to me, it feels like this fear of having an unfinished story is really impacting 
the kind of writing, you know, mm. I do the script we're no, working no, yeah. on. You know, there's this fear of like, man, you know, I really think we need two seasons, but I, I'm scared to write this in a way that it's only one because I'm going to, I do not want to inflict fan blue balls on somebody, you know? Tell like, you a lie. <laughs> <laughs> do like Robert Kirkman. <laughs> Tell you a lie. If you do, <laughs> you get in there and when you're writing a story, you go ahead and you make it entertaining, you make it cool as hell or whatever. Make sure you write some plot points in there that can't be resolved until the next season. See, number one. Oh, that, that's number one. I, I, okay, that's number one. Number two, you put some characters in there that motherfuckers can cosplay, that motherfuckers talk about all the time. Case in point. So, mm. uh, you mean the enemy? I don't know. We were friends <laughs> with cosplayers earlier in this chat. Yeah. Like. I'll tell you, <laughs> And especially if they love the character so much that they're going to be like, I'm going to cosplay and I'm going to know everything about it. I'm like, okay, even more useful. Like a walking commercial, right? A walking uh, infomercial, so to oh, speak. Yeah. But you want to write characters, seriously, you want to write characters that are so compelling that people talk about them in the water cooler. And you think about oh. that when you're writing, right? Mm. Like, I can't talk about, I'd say this, in The Last Gate, we have two characters that we had to save because we had so many good. When people say we had so many good characters, that's what people say. Mm. That we had to save the best, the two most compelling characters for episode two. So all you mm. getting, people like episode one a lot. But if they, if we had those characters in there, it'll bump episode one up to the next level. So mm. episode two is gonna be fucking nuts, mm-hmm. right? But we're building up to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And so we're gonna throughout the entire series, we build up, we build, add more characters, add more interesting characters, more interesting characters, to where at the end of the day, people are gonna be like, oh, "Okay, end of the day, what the fuck?" <laughs> That's what you want. What the fuck? And then Netflix, their algorithm gonna be say, "What the fuck?" <laughs> well, like I don't, I gotta admit, man, I don't know if that feels like enough in this day and age because mm. it's like, um, I don't know. Let's talk about our friend Netflix again. Since, you <laughs> Stranger know, Things, look at what they did. They did, but... Uh, you know, what we, the fuck? They did do what the fuck, but the yeah. problem is that there are, I'd argue, a lot of other little quote-unquote hidden gems on there mm-hmm. that are equally what the fuck. Orange is the New Black lasted how long? Seven seasons. Oh, I'm a fanatic, too. I love... I, but yeah. I, right, I, and what happened every season? What the fuck? It was, there was a lot of what the fuck. I'm not saying that Orange is the New Black is my go-to 18 times show. of what the fuck. But I know what Blood and Bone ended with a hell of a what the fuck, though, too. Yeah, and but it see, still the, got canceled. But the thing with Blood and Bone, though, at the end of the day was this. Mm. And I like the show a lot. Mm. It got repetitive in the telling. All right, so the, the second season came, right? The yeah. second season, we stayed pretty much around that same area. It didn't take us in. in it didn't take us in. It, it didn't take the story. It didn't in expand my the world. In well, any it doesn't so much expand the world, but. It didn't, the story kind of got routine oh, in a part of it. Okay. And that's when I knew, okay. I said, ah, oh, fuck, this is good. But, you know, when I got to the point where I could, or I had, where I could take it or leave it if I watched it, that's when I knew it was good. Mm. And is that kind of like, that's the death knell, the death knell for shows yeah. these days. It's like, if you ever have a moment where it's, there's no such thing as the slow burn anymore. Like, you almost can't get away with slow burn Well, you anymore. can do it, but you have to be masterful in doing it. I guess this is a Korean show called Arthur Chronicles, right? Mm-hmm. I've been watching it for two seasons, right? The shit, the way they put it out, I didn't know it was two seasons. Mm. So I'm like, fuck. You know? Mm. It ended. What the fuck? Mm. And I'm like, damn. When did Arthur Chronicles come back? Turn out, it's on Hulu. I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. Mm. So I'm there again, <laughs> right? The, the thing was that even though, like I said, it was that slow burn. Mm. It was that what the fuck moments and stuff. And it mm. was that soap opera type syrupy thing, right? Oh, yeah. But it still interested me enough to where I had to go to that next episode. Mm. I'm a binger. And if you can make me binge, then motherfucker, you got me all day, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, case in point, again, I watch, I wait for anime to come out and I watch them two, three, four weeks ahead of time. So <laughs> I'm watching, and I rave about them too big time. So I'm watching uh, the remake of uh, Star Blader's uh, Space Battleship Yama- Yamato uh, mm. 20, 20 episodes. Mm-hmm. I love the thing because everything I loved about Yamato, the original anime back in the late uh, 70s, early 80s, they kept it. And they added to it. The animation was like, it's beautiful, right? But everything, even the melodrama is there, right? And so 
I finished the first season, right? Oh, man, it's great. I know a second season. Second season came. I'm like, so they throw some new shit in there. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? <laughs> this motherfucker wiping the floor with everybody. God damn. They had me. <laughs> that was it. I, I, I had my blanket on and I was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's com- reason I said it, it's comfort food, right? Yeah. So we like these, we like this stuff, right? Mm. So, uh, like you were talking about Jupiter's uh, legacy, uh, right? Yeah. I'm not in the habit of talking about fiction shows. Is what it is. Mm. The thing with that, the way I reason think that, I, uh, and I reason you know, I didn't think that works because mm. they tried to translate it too literally. Yeah. When you move mm. from, uh, when you move from source material to another medium, you get some liberty. That's, that's kind the of the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing about adaptation, and right. why it's so many people that want direct adaptations really don't, because a direct adaptation gives you nothing new. But we got a shitty adaptation of a Comic Con, though. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he brought it back. He brought it back. We got a shitty, <laughs> ap- we got a shitty ap- adaptation of Comic Con, though. This oh, last yeah. week. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, and it's funny how the oh and you get to see those people we were talking about uh, oh. who's jokes in we get to see them at the comic con a whole <laughs> bunch of them this year god damn but it's Your funny how this you at that comic con yeah signing them autograph for four hundred dollars your show wasn't for four hundred dollars <laughs> but it's funny how the conversation itself wound up evolving away from just an unfinished story to what causes the story to go unfinished. Like, I mean, one thing we actually didn't, we, we mentioned slightly, uh, but honestly, I can uh, speak on directly, is sometimes the story isn't what the creator thought it was going to be. Like, case in point, I started out uh, with, the, with the series, uh, the original rendition of Right Star. Uh, not, not, no, sorry, not Right Star, Requiem. Requiem. <laughs> right starters, te- right starters, technically actually still exists. It's just been reformatted. Requiem was the original story. It's actually you can see part of it in the in our first issue of Madros Plus. Requiem was my first foray into like a space epic a in a lot of ways. It was it was it was a big. I I was big ambitious. I had all this stuff going on. The thing of it was though. As I was working on it, I started disconnecting from it. I started to lose that sense of what, why this story. But that's was my so fault, important. though, bro. Uh, I'm gonna tell you why it's my fault. Uh oh. Because <laughs> I pushed you to. I'm just being real with you. Mm. I pushed you somewhere you shouldn't have been. Mm. Okay, you shouldn't mm. have been. You should have been telling stories at that time. You should have been telling stories like uh, Paragon Panic. Mm. You shouldn't have been telling them type of stories. It's too much. Mm. That's yeah. what that was all Welcome about. Welcome to Honey Come Hide Out, Dr. Phil edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. We're actually going to resolve You some got shit. to <laughs> try to figure out what's happening. <laughs> but yes, Rec- Rec- Requiem, you were yeah. saying. You... But, but yeah, no, but that, that was the thing. Like, I mean, it was, I mean, the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Like the ideas were like, yo, the Mark will tell you, I'm an I'm an idea guy. Like the ideas were coming fast and furious, and just there was a lot of really great shit there. But the more I worked on it, the more I just it felt it didn't feel like my voice guiding it. Not saying like you were driving me, Mark. Not saying that at oh, all. I shit out your ass. <laughs> I like I did, but, Boy, like but, I did. But it was, but it was one of those things where it's like I. I felt like I was trying to tell somebody else's story. And but you know another I, thing about that story, though, the reason why I felt like that, I think, too? What was that? That story was like your fan out story to all the other shit that you had read. Hmm. So it had so many elements of all the other shit that you had read that you couldn't find yourself in. The, yeah, I had no I had no anchor with it. Right. So you took yeah. it out behind the shed. <laughs> <laughs> If effectively, <laughs> like I, like Mark and I just did a uh, um what's up what's the what what's the well what's the term we we auctioned off uh the but we cut this shit out that damn thing we yeah. got there it's that shit's everywhere but requiem 
Yeah, we, we basically sorted out, okay, this character's going over here, that character's going over there. You know what it felt like? like? It felt like we was running a foster home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, a little bit. Yeah, we kind of, we had orphans and we found homes for them. So, <laughs> just to kind of capture this question uh, and make uh-oh. sure I understand what you're saying here. Ah, shit, okay. As a creator, mm. you are of the mindset that if your story is shaping into something you don't like, even if your viewers like it, you would rather put it down. Kill it in the crib, kill it than, in the goddamn crib. Then try to finish it for the consumers. Honestly? <laughs> yeah. I can't get no five for that. That's a five. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know whether I'm giving you this five. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, honestly, because of everything a creator puts into their work, I would actually say yes. It's now, like the story y'all working on right now. Mm. We want you guys to get something out of it. I'll be honest with you. I don't give two shits about that fucking story. <laughs> the reason, but, but it, it's a good learning experience for you guys to figure out as writers what it is you think you can, what it is you think works, and what it is it doesn't work. If you guys make it go blam, hey, we're going to hook it up. Be like, yeah, that's you going blam. Mm-hmm. But what you learn from it is the most important. Mm. That's the thing. Yeah. Jeff's going to kill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but, that's, but that's the thing. If it really comes down to the situation, Requiem technically was in the right place for that to happen because we'd only done the one story. Like, there was a lot of background work that had been done into it. Nice soundtrack, too. It did have a cool soundtrack. Uh, but uh, but it also was not uh, it had it hadn't gained the traction that would have hurt if it had if it had gotten out there. So technically, that was the best time for it to be put away. Now, if you've got something like um, I don't I don't know like uh, uh, tossing a shit out there, the Dresden Files or some shit like that, or like. The better uh, drama file. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, <laughs> like thing, like something that is lo- like seriously long term going and things like that. You just suddenly hell, Game of Thrones. If suddenly George R. R. Martin suddenly said he's not going to finish that series, an entire portion of the nerd fan base. Did he say that? I was like, I kind of feel like <laughs> he's he kind. Of, he that? may not have said that, but he's kind of said that. Yeah. I got a check, and I want. Another one, <laughs> but like, like if he just, but now like, there's implication, and then there's outright statement of fact. And if he flat out said he's him, never hey, so going you to, you're saying this: if we push a guy in the well and no one's there to hear it, did he really fall in that well? <laughs> did that man get a check down that well? That's right. <laughs> he got a check and check. But like, if he were to outright say, "Yeah, I'm never going to finish this book series," that would be devastating for a number of people. But they lie to themselves if they aren't. <laughs> if they had already moved on past that, they still in the denial yeah. stage. <laughs> uh, you know that's a river. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something along those lines, though. If the creator outright states that, yeah, no, this this story is not going to be finished, it, especially if it depends on like a specific reason, like, hey, I can't come to an agreement with the rights holders, so. Unfortunately, this story is going to come undone. We've seen that happen a number of times. Absolutely. Or if there's just the fact, I created this thing in a really difficult time in my life. Y'all, I can't go back to this shit. That's why you're never going to get a crow, too. (laughs) Exactly. James O'Barr created that shit. He threw all of his pain, all of his Mm -hmm. angst in that shit. He's like, catharsis. (laughs) Thank you, crow. (laughs) Walked on. He kept on moving. Yeah, and that's the, and that's the thing. Like, there are so many reasons why someone might need to, and if you're a fan of this individual, you kind of need to just be fucking okay with Look, it. Urban asked me a question one day. He says, "Man, Judas Priest, man, if something happens, you gonna finish it, man? You know, you going?" I say, "No." <laughs> what do you mean? If I ain't finished, ain't getting finished. Mm-hmm. That's it. I say, "Cause nobody that I know." has the reasons for writing that shit than I do. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it is what it is. All right, no one had no one has those reasons. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, you could write it, it's gonna be a facsimile. Like, 
I don't mind people. You could go to, to say, okay, I want to write a Coke Red story. Write it. That's mm. cool. It can be part of the canon. Mm. But that particular one character, that mm. character is my catharsis. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, and that's it. and that and that's the thing. You know, like um, if I remember correctly, I think it was Brandon Sanderson that yeah. finished that. Oh, the Wheel of Time. Okay, series. but Brandon Sanderson is a monster. Like, if anybody was gonna be able to finish that <laughs> series, my man's was gonna be able to. I'm in the middle of reading that series. Keep your mouth shut, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just I'm just using it as an example of one of those rare instances where someone was able to pick up where the author. Unfortunately, yeah. left but also Brandon Sanders is just like not human. Like he is not a, a human is, person. Yeah. That person's name wasn't uh, yeah, th- yeah. Th- that person's name wasn't uh Chris Herbertson. That's for damn sure. <laughs> well, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, oh, yeah, Frank, Frank, Frank Herbertson. <laughs> it damn sure wasn't his son. Cause do what he did to the rest of those Doom books. Ugh. I've, I've heard unfortunate things. Garbage. About yeah. But it's but it is one of those rare instances in which yeah that 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 could that was able to be done. And they tried me. to talk Chris Rice and they've been doing some more Vampire Chronicles. He's like, oh no, fuck that. I'm not mm. doing that. My mother yeah. ain't come back from the grave and killing me. And and actually, in a fun, surprising way, um, we have another revival that happened. X Men '97. They literally took the show. And continued it from the original animated series. Now, the original showrunners and directors came on as consultants to help with tonal consistency. But I hate that show. Oh, do you? I hate X Men. I ain't watched nothing seven. I can't uh, say. Okay. I couldn't stand that fucking show. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was pretty anti X Men back then. That I animation only, was so whack. I literally only watched it because it was a Marvel thing on, and usually I what I wanted, really wanted love. to watch. What I really wanted to watch was after it. So I was like, you Man, know, when you were a kid, you're just so like, corny. I, you'd put up with a thing to get to the thing you really want. Yeah, that's like the first three books of Wheel of Time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Goddamn. God. Also, Wheel of Time series, not bad. The, 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 the TV show. I actually didn't hate it. I can't the first say I love season it. was good. I ain't watched the second season yet. I watched, actually, I watched one episode of the second season. First I'm, was I'm like, not sure man, how I feel about it, it was, comparatively. But the thing but with the first I still season, enjoyed it. the first season was just very uh, uh, CW-ish a little bit. You know? Yeah, it was. I was yeah, like, it was. I'm going to keep on watching it, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. But like, in all seriousness, X-Men 97, as someone that did not like the original show, like I said, I hated the animation, too. I don't like the animation yeah. now. <laughs> but I will say it is imp- – you may not like the designs, but the animation itself is actually really good. Like, the actual fluidity of it is fucking Wait, dope. It's what happened when you use 3DS Max. Anyway. <laughs> but, like, honestly, the show is itself. The show itself is really good. I definitely think that they've created something and actually managed to keep the spirit of the original while actually progressing it with its audience. It's a rare thing. It's actually really good. I would recommend... At least checking out the first. Irvin and them been like, man, you could watch it, man. Until you could watch it, man. Hey, I'd I'll say, watch it. Hey, I'd say you watch it or don't. That's your <laughs> fucking choice. But um, but that uh, I can't it, dog it, it if I don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, but it ties in with the topic in that it's something that did get picked up. Yeah, even though it got it, it ended quite a few years ago, and it's it just really comes down to. Whether the story gets finished or not, it really comes down to the creator and the audience. Or you can milk the, it like Walking Dead. No, that too. <laughs> and the, it really boils down to, does the creator have the passion and the drive to finish it? Or, do, or it comes down to the audience to honor the creator's choice to not finish it. And... Honest, then, like I said before, I am firmly in the camp of it's the creator's choice, and the audience has to live with whatever choice they choose yeah, to I'm make. Yeah, never finish next, man. Exactly. There are a lot of really seminal works that have that aren't finished. I'm pretty sure Elementals didn't get finished either, did? Bill Willingham. Yeah. He, he's a, he's a whole different topic. <laughs> yeah, there's. A, I mean, but that's you know you have read Fable. The guy who wrote Fable, Bill Willingham. He wrote one of my favorite superhero comics. And he started out, as, it was elemental. It was kind of like the Fantastic Four, but it was far more mature. Mm-hmm. He, he dropped that shit like a hot potato. 
Okay. Bad Dog by Joe Casey. Yep. A werewolf with such self destruct with such self destructive tendencies, he literally refused to become human. Just stayed a werewolf all the time. I might do that if I were a werewolf. It's honestly a great fucking series. It was supposed Joe to be Casey longer, got but mad it, at him, no. he got upset. Yeah, he, he did. He's still upset. All right, all right, all right. We're getting yeah. close to time, Uh-oh. so I must, <laughs> I must make my moment, my minute. Uh, the minute must happen. The moment of the minute. Must... The moment of the minute must happen. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's an existential shit. <laughs> what minute though? That's right. Yeah, we're gonna reflect on that a little bit after uh, this is done. Shit. But uh, so. The science that I found for this, uh, because we decided that saying God is dead and the world is cursed does not count as a science minute fact. Um, I instead did find some science around the theories of how the universe will end. So, oh, shit. <laughs> so um, all right, uh, Comey's, did you know, first off, that apparently the heat death of the universe theory uh, mm-hmm. has, has not been like fully been debunked, but there's a lot more mixed feelings on that in the scientific community but <laughs> but yeah so here here are some ways that science mm. thinks the world might end uh mm. or actually not the world sorry the universe mm. all right <clears throat> so let's see we've got here uh one of the scenarios includes black holes oh well, yeah oh, with according some black holes. to relativity time ends inside black holes but mm. continues in the rest of the universe if someone falls into a black hole their remains will eventually reach a singularity at the center of the hole and their timeline will end <laughs> So it's a very, like, individual kind of death. God damn. Uh, the big crunch. If the universe collapses into a big crunch, time will lose all meaning. Yep. And this, <laughs> and this, it's going to get hot. Like, thanks, oh, science. <laughs> Glad we're yeah. funded it. In this scenario, the universe will stop expanding and start shrinking with galaxies colliding and all matter in the universe scrunched together into an mm. infinitely small space. Otherwise How, known as singularity. Uh, otherwise known as singularity. <laughs> However, <laughs> observations suggest that the current cosmic expansion will continue indefinitely. So, guess Big Crunch is a moot point. Mm. And finally, eternal inflation. <laughs> theory called eternal inflation predicts that time will end in 5 billion years. This theory is based on the idea that the universe is part of a multiverse, which is a structure made up of an infinite number of universes. So, we, I guess we're just going to keep on getting so big that... We, it just never ends. Time does not end here, whereas with the Big Crunch, where time definitely ends. Mm. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of other fun, like, and there are other temporal cataclysms that could end time, including the Big Rip, the Big Freeze, and the Big Break. So, lots of ways that it all might end. All big. All big. I, I've, always, <laughs> I've, I've always wondered, though, with all those different theories, I'm surprised there isn't one that that basically says the universe expands so much it thin it actually thins itself out. That is the theory known as the Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. ties the universe together, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's all yeah. zen, man. That's right. Yeah. Which is the big mood. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's right. That was clever as fuck. Y'all God are welcome damn. for that. All right, oh, carry yeah. on. Wrap it up. <laughs> Bring it home, Joe. Bring it home. <laughs> but yes. Um. Yeah, honestly, everything we've talked about today ultimately has tied in to one extent or another. Things not going as planned. <laughs> I'm gonna do another part to this on 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 in the lab. Okay, so get ready. All right. So, like, I mean, Motor City Comic Con did not go the way none of us expected. Not still not necessarily bad, but it's so it solidified a bad trend. Shut the bad. <laughs> And the prospect that, unfortunately, not all creative endeavors will see completion. Not which, so much yet to be. Yeah. And just, and that, in a lot of ways, it, it's, it creates an existential question, ultimately. Because if you think about it, lives are never actually truly finished or completed either. We can all, none of us can truly that say heavy that. That's shit right there. Yeah. None of us can say how long we're going to be here and what the fuck we're actually going to finish before we go. So, ultimately, make that shit count. That's all we well, can do. Finish eating me another cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> Deadly, we'll see that arc to completion. <laughs> <laughs> I do it like this. <laughs> nah. Oh, that's, that's it. <laughs> that was the, Deadly, that cheesesteak almost looks like <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> so we had the 
outlaw Blackie Jones. Otherwise the, known the as Dark Black Dew. That's right. Yeah, that sounds so fancy. That sounds fancy as fuck. It really does. I thought to myself, I said, how dark could you really get dark in my life? I said, dark black. Yeah, 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 that'll do it. Oh, why not just go Vanta black? Oh, we don't care. (laughs) Jeff is going to be like this. Yeah, Vanta black. (laughs) Jeff is obsessed with it. Ah, yes. But yes, Mark Dudley, thank you for joining us. My pleasure, crew. My pleasure. Uh, The Scientist Supreme, Christine Kitchens. Slightly more lively at the end of the show than I was at the beginning. Ain't that always how it goes? It though? is always how it goes, though. That's what happens oh, yeah. when you broke. That's what happens, yeah. <laughs> and I was your host, the Sin Master Thirst King, Joe Kane. Now get the fuck out. <laughs>